Have you ever tried to copy a master? I'm quite sure you did. But what was your intention when you were copying? Was it just to copy it or to learn from it? Today, I want to show you how you can copy, learn and make it your own. I will copy this portrait by Van Gogh and then I will make my own, in my own style, copying Van Gogh. There are a lot of benefits to copying master paintings. And there is no hierarchy in that. But first, I would say this is good when you have an art block and you don't know what to paint. You just grab a painting you like and you try to copy it. Well, you can call this a study, so there is less pressure on you. It's not copying, it's studying. So with that, you can go crazy and do whatever you want. Yeah, and the day I was painting that, I didn't have an art blog, but I didn't know what to paint. But I had an hour and I wanted to try to study this portrait by Van Gogh. Second benefit to copying master paintings is your skills. You will develop your skills by copying the techniques and the styles. You can also get your own skills to level up. You can learn a lot about composition, color theory, brushwork, everything you can apply to your own work. But it is important to be really aware of what you're doing and maybe you can take notes. Because taking notes is a great way to document your art journey. And while doing so, you are also improving your self-critique. Because you will be able to see what is lacking in your own art. Maybe it's a problem of composition and learning the masters will give you new ideas. And there is a big difference between just looking at a painting, either in a museum or online or in a book, and actually painting it. Because you will see a thousand more times different things than just looking at it. It's really amazing how it works. And this is how you improve your observation skills. You can really be um, mindful of all the details, how the light is falling, how the colors are turning, how the colors are interacting. It's, ha, ah, yes, improving your observation skills. Maybe it's the thing I prefer in studying the masters. Also, it will help you to develop patience and focus. This is not my forte. I'm not really patient. And copying a master, uh, you can do it in two ways. You can either try to replicate the exact brushwork and color work, or you can try to simplify it and make it your own. This is what I did in this painting. His background is really busy and I'd rather simplify it just to give the impression of it. For example, in the face, I was looking at the image, just looking without painting, and I said, oh, there are a lot of colors in this face, until I began to paint it. And there are, I don't know, maybe 15 or 20 different colors in the face, including colors I would have never used by myself. Even if I always say that the skin can have any color you like, but he's much stronger than me with his colors. And I had a hard time actually to find the correct color, the one he used without trying to turn it into something weaker or more soft or whatever. It's really interesting how you force yourself to follow someone else's style. Another important benefit of studying master is that you are developing your muscle memory. And this is why we always say practice, practice, practice. It's you are building muscle memory by itself in your hand and your arm, but also in your brain. You are creating paths of information. And if you copy the brush stroke of Van Gogh, for example, it's really specific with a lot of short 
and moving brush strokes. This is not the style I'm used to work with. And it's really interesting to create new pathways in your muscles and in your brain. And studying just one painting from a master might be not enough to develop this muscle memory, but it's the beginning of something. And when you choose a master you want to study, you'd better take someone with a very distinctive style, not a painter amongst others that you cannot recognize at the first sight. And Van Gogh has a very specific style, and I defy you to describe it. And describing it, yes, okay, there is this black outline, or dark outline at least, this brush stroke, this strong color palette, etc. You know the theory of it, but until you paint it, you don't really understand it. And let me tell you that I've learned a lot while painting these portraits. And some things I like, some I don't, but this is what is helping me define my own style or shape it, as I said in this video. I've kind of finished the face and I'm adding this same outline in the background. And I want to do this now before painting the dress because the dress is very strong, very dark, but it helps me to have the background finished so I can balance everything. Because so far the face is looking very, very strong with this dark outline. And I think that adding the black outline in the background will help me balance everything before doing the dress. And I'm calling this a study because I'm not exactly copying. First of all, I don't have the same medium. He was painting with oil and I'm painting with gouache inside my new sketchbook, by the way, because I have finished mine. And I wanted to go with the colors I had in my palette. And this is kind of a Prussian blue, which is not exactly the color he used. And at first I said, okay, let's go for the color I like. But then it doesn't really fit with the background, so I had to cover everything with a more accurate color, which was ultramarine blue. So this is one of the other benefits of studying the masters, is that you have to really pay attention to the colors and to be able to replicate a color or a color range or a color harmony, I would say. this. This is important that you have a bit of color theory in mind before doing that, or it can really be tricky if you don't know how to mix your colors. Another benefit is that it makes you think about how to solve some technical issues. Here, the, the dress has some dots on it, so you have to think, how are you doing this? Is it the dress first, and the shadows, and then the dots on top of it, or should you paint the dots and add the shadows after. It's interesting to try to find how to do things. Here I thought I would do the complete dress with the shadows and highlights and then add the dots on top of it with different shades of red because they are not supposed to be all the same colors. And this is where I wanted to simplify a lot because I didn't have the patience to paint every dot very precisely. So it's very rough, just the impression of the dots. And it looks weird so far, but it will get better eventually. Okay, this was really time consuming, but I'm done and I'm quite happy with the result actually. Now, let's take everything I've learned while studying this portrait by Van Gogh and make my own portrait in his style, but also in mine. So I wanted to implement in this portrait, which is by Zvet on Museum. It's a free app where you can get pictures of people to paint from and they are copyright free. So I made a very detailed drawing, including a pattern background, because I think it does a lot in the Van Gogh style is to have 
a strong and busy background, which is not what I'm used to work with, and this is what it's interesting. But I made a mistake because I made the drawing and then I went on top of it with a very opaque color and I didn't see my drawing at all. So lesson learned for pattern background, paint first, draw after. I wasn't really sure I would master this technique, so I wanted to go with the face first. And before the face, I painted the hair because it gives a contrast, a high contrast in values. And I had a hard time to find the colors, the kind of crazy colors from Van Gogh. I began with a kind of a skin base color and then it was just pure struggle. And also I've chosen a reference image with a tricky angle. I'm not sure my drawings accurate, but okay, bear with me. I'm just having fun and learning by studying Van Gogh. I had painted a lot and I wanted to just look at the image in a mirror and my eye was completely wrong so I had to erase everything and paint completely the eye again but that's not a problem because with gouache you can always change your mind and change your painting and if you want to know more about how to fix your mistakes with gouache I have a complete video dedicated to this that I link above and in the description of this video. So far, I don't really like it. It's really not my style and I'm not sure I like this black outline everywhere in the face. And it's time to make the pattern background because I'm quite sure it will balance everything. And as I said before, my painting in the background is a bit too opaque. So I was trying to go light with my painting in the background and in the end, it's not thick enough. Well, anyway, Mistake again, but never mind. You learn by make, making mistakes. Uh, I'm painting the flowers with what I can see by transparency of my initial drawing, but I will have to redraw everything on the right part of it. Well, I still don't like it this far. And I know why. It's because when I'm working, I'm usually placing a single color everywhere in the painting. I mean, if I have red on my brush, I will try to place it in different parts of the painting. And I barely work with finished parts of the painting. I work everything together and everything is coming to life at the same time. And here I'm quite disturbed. And this is where I was talking about brain memory because my brain is used to work in layers on the complete painting. And here the face is totally finished and everything else is just rough. And I have a hard time adjusting to this. And more struggle with the dress, the top, the scarf. I don't know what it is exactly. Um, I would make some uh, blended colors usually, but here I have to go in the Van Gogh style and also think there will be dark and light um, brush strokes to kind of make an outline everywhere. So I have to think about that. Also, I don't like the skin so far. It lacks all the brushwork on it. Very interesting to try to integrate someone else in your own style. I know I've said that before, but I'm still amazed. In the end, I'm quite not completely happy with this portrait. After all, it's just the first one I'm doing after Van Gogh. But I think the black outlines well, they add a lot of things and they help to tie everything together. So I might keep that in my work. Also, I like the brush strokes. It gives some vibrancy to the portrait. I'm not really fond of the strong colors in the portrait, but I think I will keep one thing or two or maybe two or three from studying Van Gogh. And now I'm going for another study. 
So let me know in comments, are you making master studies or copies? And does it help you to shape your art style? I'm curious to know. Thanks for watching. Bye bye. Au revoir.